In this talk, I'm going to show you two cases of avascular necrosis of the femoral head. The first is this one, which is a 50-year-old male. Fair warning, the gross does not match the microscopic image, but I did want to give you a sense of what avascular necrosis looks like. The avascular necrosis is typically subchondral. What do I mean by that? It's right under the articular cartilage. It's typically wedge-shaped. What is lacking in this picture for avascular necrosis, and don't get me wrong, this is avascular necrosis, but what is lacking is that lifting off or the detachment of the cartilage that you typically see with avascular necrosis. This is a very typical low power appearance of avascular necrosis. You'll see three layers essentially. The first layer is the intact articular cartilage that is alive, right under that the bone, the subchondral bone, is dead. And the third layer, a distance away, is the interface between the dead bone and the living bone. And in this case, there's actually fibrocartilage or callus-like material within the interface. So this is, again, the top layer, intact articular cartilage, the dead subchondral bone, I can promise you that all of the osteocyte nuclei have dropped out. The marrow is dead as well and is often filled with this eosinophilic, proteinaceous, junky, monkey-like appearance. And that becomes a lot clearer here. Again, the top layer, living cartilage. There is some cloning, if you remember my previous talk. The immediate subchondral bone is entirely dead not a single osteocyte nucleus, and then that junky monkey-like material. All right, so let's turn our attention from the surface to the base of that wedge-shaped lesion. This is the interface between the living and the dead. And this is that interface. You can see fibrocartilage-like material here. Notice this is all living. Anything above this was all dead. And here's the reactive bone at the interface. And you'll see that this bone beneath the interface is living. It's lamella bone because you see these parallel lamellae. And there is some remodeling in the sense that there are a larger number of osteocyte nuclei than you see in normal bone. The marrow space is living and not dead, unlike, unlike the more superior bone that we just saw. Here's another case. This is much younger and it's a woman. But again, notice very similar features, those three layers, the top layer, the living cartilage, the subchondral bone is dead, and there's a crack between the subchondral bone and the rest of the bone right there. And then there's the interface, which is partially living and partially dead. And finally, the fourth layer, if you will, which is completely alive. Also notice this fibrocartilage. This is a healing response to the avascular necrosis. The key Histologic features for avascular necrosis are on gross, a wedge-shaped area of subchondral sclerosis that often appears chalky. The articular cartilage is often detached but microscopically alive. The subchondral bone is dead, resulting in a crack between the articular cartilage and the subchondral bone. The interface naturally is alive with fibrosis and fibrocartilage.